Attention, attention, all personnel. Incoming podcast. This is MASH Matters. Over and out. It's MASH Matters, the podcast celebrating the greatest television series of all time. I'm Ryan Patrick, alongside my good friend, Mr. Jeff Maxwell. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Ryan Patrick. And we are good friends. We've been good friends for a long time now. Yeah, this how about is- that? Five years. We didn't know each other. We didn't know what we were doing. Well, actually, we did. I take that back. What am I talking about? Well, we've known each other for quite a few years, but you know, in a professional sense, it's been five years now we've been doing this podcast. That's right. And it, and, it, and a joy it has been, by golly. And I lost the pool in the uh, how long will this podcast last contest. <laughs> yeah, I geez. blew that one. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea it was going to last this long. Well, this is a particularly fun podcast today because it relates to you and me, Ryan, and where and how and for what reasons we met. Right. Because in 19, I guess it was 1997. Back in the late 1900s. (laughs) There were covered wagons, there were horses, there were everything. (laughs) Uh, I published my book called Secrets of the Mash Mess, The Lost Recipes of Private Igor. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a really cute idea to to create a cookbook based on a really terrible cook uh, <laughs> during the mass show. And I had a lot of fun doing it. And I worked with the publisher, uh, you know, quite closely and to get all the right stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the book came out and you were nice enough and your radio program was nice enough to contact me or I don't know, somebody contacted you and said, hey, this guy would be good on your show. And I came on your show and radio show, and we had such a good time. We stayed in touch for a million years, and here we are. Here we are today. Doing a podcast. And all because of the cookbook. All because of the cookbook. And now the cookbook is back. It's back. Bigger and better than ever. And it's bigger and better than ever. I do take credit for some of it. <laughs> I did write it initially. <laughs> it was my idea. But during the years, the publisher... Uh, and I won't uh, say anything terrible about anybody, but the publisher made a couple of mistakes and it created an environment whereby the book was then published and printed in a very poor quality. Not initially. The first run, I mean, the original run was really nice. Yes. But in more recent years, yes. if you purchased it on Amazon, you were getting a very uh, mediocre copy. The, yeah, the pictures were faded and the, even the text was faded. The print was everything. The, it was terrible. It, it's so. like when you Xerox a Xerox of a Xerox. It, <laughs> it, it's kind of like that, right? <laughs> That's exactly what it was. So I didn't know that was going on. And a friend of mine said, hey, if I buy one of your books and send it to you, will you sign it? Because my uncle Gus wants one. And I went, sure. Yeah, great. So he did. And I saw the book and I opened it up and I went, oh, what's happened to the book? And I actually bought another one and it was the same thing. So I freaked out Hmm. and I was so concerned. Uh, It was an insult to me, the guy who wrote it. It was an insult to the people who worked on MASH, the writers, the directors, of everybody who worked on MASH, the crew, the actors, because everybody poured their heart and soul into this thing. And this book was kind of my little, you know, love song to everybody that I knew. And that's what it was for. And when I saw it, I thought it was an insult to me and it's insult to them and even more insulting to anybody who purchased it. They're spending their hard-earned money to buy a book and they want it to look nice and they get this terrible product. I went crazy and I called the publisher and we had several terse conversations. Uh, He explained certain things that happened and why it happened and why we were getting what we were seeing. And then over a period of months, we negotiated where I took back all the rights to the book completely. So I owned the book 100% and he was out of the game. So then I thought, well, gosh, I would love to make this right. And so I sat and I said, well, how do I do that? And I came up with absolutely no answer. (laughs) Nothing. There was nothing in my head. (laughs) I had no idea how to fix this problem. And lo and behold, out of the blue, a guardian angel writes to MASH Matters and says, Hey, uh, you know, uh, my name is Arthur, and uh, maybe I can help you. I heard you talking about how frustrated you were with the book, and maybe I can help you. And I said, yeah, well, okay, sure. Well, hey, I need help. Why not? So I looked up Arthur Healy, <laughs> <laughs> and I was blown away. He is a, uh, an award-winning photographer, designer, so forth and so on. And he was nice enough to say, I heard what you said, and I think maybe I can help you. So 
He did. And I have to say right now, and I will say this publicly, and I'll say it, keep saying it, the only reason I was able to get this book back up and running and look the way it looks is because of Mr. Arthur Healy. And so I think it would be only fitting that we had Arthur Healy on our podcast. Mm -hmm. And why not right now? Please welcome Arthur Healy. Hello, Arthur. Hey, how's it going, guys? (laughs) You got me crying over here. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I say everything exactly the way you told me, Arthur? I, oh, yeah, you followed the script perfectly. Oh, thank you. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> well, hey, thank you for coming on the podcast. We, we really are happy to have you here because you really did an extraordinary job and, and worked with me, you know, over, I think it was about a year we worked together and tried to put this thing back on its feet. There was new text, there were new pictures, there were old pictures. Wait, did you say nude pictures? Is that yeah, what you well, said? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. yeah. That was Arthur's idea. I went for it. <laughs> Thank you. That version comes in a plain brown wrapper. <laughs> 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 and it's much more expensive than me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we had pictures that had to be kind of replaced or refound or replicated or whatever we did to them. And Arthur had such a, a wonderful idea of how to do that. So all those things had to take place for the book to become new again and, and palatable and correct. So again, Arthur, what, what did you see and what did you say? Hey, I think I can do this because... Um. I I don't I'm not sure exactly what it was that made me think I could do it any better than anyone else. It was more just I believe in shooting 100% of your shots and I saw something that I thought would be really fun to do and something I thought you guys particularly you Jeff needed a little help with. So I was like, you know what? I'll reach out and see what happens. Was it quite evident to you when you saw the the original that I sent you? Now I I goofed because I sent you the newer awful version and I really meant to send you one of the originals as well so you could see the difference, but I stupidly didn't do that. But you saw the awful version. That's the one you said, hey, wait a minute. Is that right? Yeah. So once you and I got talking, you said, let me send you the copy of this and we'll see what it looks. And you didn't really goof. You proposed sending me an original one. And when you told me you only had two left, I freaked out at the idea of being responsible for one. So I told you not to send me one. <laughs> so I did get the the less quality one. But when I saw it, I, I could definitely see it needed some TLC. Yeah. Did anything stand out to you more than something else when you saw it? <laughs> the, the thing that stood out to me that's kind of interesting, I don't know if other people notice this in their copies that do have the lesser quality copy is... You can see where the pages were photocopied along the edge of the page. Wow. I didn't know that. And I just, I had to chuckle at that as as somebody who's not a big fan of bad details like that. I was cringing oh. <laughs> at the fact that you could see the photocopy edges. Wow. I did not know. I have to go back and look at the other. See, I, I didn't know that was there. Wow. My goodness. So you looked at that and said, hey, well, I think I can make this better. Yeah. After I saw that, I was like, oh, Jeff, we need to get this fixed. (laughs) And I was on a mission at that point to solve a problem. I'm amazed at the work that you did, Arthur, to revive this book. I have a copy of the original, the first run. And when I compare that copy and this copy, it looks almost identical. This is a huge undertaking. I, I wouldn't even know where to start with something like that. Where do you start? Well, if you open the cover of the book, there's a first page. You just start right there. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see. Yes, I see that. You're right. There is a first page. Yeah, it's followed yeah. by a second page. And then there's a lot of other pages behind it. Yeah, so the first goal I had in starting was let's just get all the text back into the book and not looking photocopied. And so I spent a good few months just making sure all the text was back in the book. Page one all the way through. And then obviously Jeff went in and said, okay, now that we've got all the text back, let's make some changes. And so we went and made the changes, but we had to start with bringing the old text back to even know where to go from there to work with anything. So Jeff, when you say you made changes, did you make the recipes better? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. (laughs) The recipes are much better now than they used to be. (laughs) What changes were made? So I know that you tweaked a couple recipes and added some recipes and removed a couple recipes. I did. There were some clunkers that I thought needed to go. (laughs) And we found a few more that were more fun and, and interesting. How many new uh, recipes are there? Do you know? 
I don't know offhand, but uh, there there are over, I think, 281 recipes, I believe. There's probably more than that now. So there's enough for anybody that wants to cook something and use this as a cookbook. There's enough you can use to uh, make some good meals. They're really quite good. And yes, Igor contributed. Uh, I contributed. <laughs> My wife contributed. Uh, we had some friends that contributed. Sal Viscuso. I know yes. that his recipes is in there. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we had a, a few actual professional chefs contribute various ideas and things. So the food is actually good, even though they're uh, theoretically from Igor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the changes, any changes I made were, you know, kind of conceptual things and little thank you things to various people and some people you know, we thanked more than others. <laughs> Some people like stopped thanking and there were, <laughs> you know, just little things and ideas. And in fact, because this was a book geared for the 50th anniversary of MASH. I wrote some special little stuff about that. I included some more photos that I took on the set of MASH and little stories about things that were happening there. So, you know, I added that kind of stuff just to make it more packed full of really fun stuff and relate to the 50th anniversary. I mean, is was that does that uh, ring true, Arthur, in terms of what I did? Yeah, I think you uh, are downplaying what you did a little bit. I think you you added a lot. I know that there's a new Adam's Ribs recipe, yes. a second one, that I'm really excited to try myself. It looks delicious. <laughs> it is delicious. Adam's smoking ribs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then there there is a lot in there, and I think everybody listening to the podcast would appreciate this. You, you really are genuine in person as you are on the podcast with how much you appreciate the fans, and it shows in the book. You made an effort to make sure the fans were known. Oh, well, that's nice. That's sweet. I, You know, we have a lot of pictures of uh, Ryan Patrick and myself out at the ranch when we were out there on September 17th of the 50th anniversary. And we did a podcast out there and we have photographs of that in there. But I kind of want to go back to the fact that the photographs that were in the book originally, and many of those photographs, I sat with a video editor and took frames off of videotape to make some of the Igor pictures and all the pictures that took place during the shooting of MASH. And those were the ones that were in the original book, and there still are. But those were the ones that were heartbreaking to see what happened to them. So how the heck did you work the magic on all those pictures? Um, I, I do want to emphasize something that I think you glossed over is the fact that you pulled your pictures originally from Spanish editions of MASH. <laughs> I, and I laugh every time I think about that. <laughs> That's why you're wearing a sombrero on page 78. I was wondering. <laughs> I'd never seen that episode. It's fantastic. No, the, the reason I want to emphasize that is there's a few photos that look directly pulled from episodes. But they do not exist in the English version of MASH. Oh! And I've always wondered is if they were actually in the Spanish version and there was just like a couple editing shots so that you couldn't see the mouths or something like that. Because there's some wide angle shots that just don't exist in the American version. What? And I've often wondered how you got those. Ah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, well, that's very interesting. I had no idea that that happened. Well, uh, many years ago when I first tried to do this, 20th Century Fox did not have access to the videos that I needed. And so they sent me to the Spanish network and they had the tapes. So I contacted them and they were nice enough to allow me to, you know, have about 80 of the tapes, some of the shows that I was in and use those as a way to get, you know, various frames off those tapes. So that's interesting. I had no idea that they're different. Well, maybe it's a whole different show. <laughs> and that's the thing. I don't know if they're different or not, but it was just really surprising to me. I have two different versions of MASH on DVD. And in scrubbing all of those, there's probably three or four photos in the book that I could not replicate just because it wasn't in the episode that I own. Wow. Yeah, because you and I, Arthur, had conversations about some of the photos. You you would send me a list of uh, some photos and I'm like you. I couldn't find them. <laughs> yeah, it was it was kind of surprising. I even reached out to the MASH historian and he helped me out in finding photos as well. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, well, that's very nice. Nice of you, Ryan, to help and nice of Eric to help. I really appreciate that. That's really wonderful. Yeah, I, I definitely want to emphasize there were a few fan sites that I reached out to. Most people didn't have the photos, but Eric and Ryan, they both came through with some stuff that I just couldn't find. 
So I was very grateful to them. You know, sometimes it pays to be a hoarder. <laughs> Tell my wife that. Right, honey? So this is like a little ensemble book. I mean, everybody kind of <laughs> helped out and threw some stuff in. It took, it took a village, yeah. It took a village. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So you get the photos, but you also had to sort of manipulate some of them, didn't you? You had to make them a little better and make them look better? Yeah. So going back a little bit to your first question about where to start with the photos, you had sent me a copy of the less than ideal version. Mm -hmm. And I started looking at it. And if you could see my copy now, it is full of sticky notes and notes and... <laughs> I went through it page by page and wrote down every episode that's on each photo that I knew. And I started asking people I knew that knew MASH to help me find episode photos um, just to direct me which episode that photo is from until I figured out where every episode was. And then I had to start going one by one through every episode and pulling the image off. But then we got to the tricky part where there are a few photos we just could not find. And that's where that photo manipulation came in. We went and found the best versions we could either on the internet or through scans. And I used my photography magic to try and clean them all up. You did a great job. Oh, you did a phenomenal job. And, you know, your your photography magic is uh, very significant because I want to, at this moment, I want to take a, do a commercial for ArthurHealy.com. If you have nothing to do and are very interested in uh, industrial design or graphic design or photography or whatever, or just learning more about Arthur, go to ArthurHealy.com. He's a really talented fella, and I'm very grateful. I'm very lucky that you were a fan of MASH and was listening to the podcast and heard what I said. Because again, I, I say the second time, without your help, this could not have happened. And I did this not because I was going to get on the New York Times bestseller list, although I wouldn't hate it if I did. I mean, um, I didn't do it to buy a you know another villa in Italy. I did it because I wanted to make something right that was wrong, and I believe in that. And so that's what I started out to do, and I was hoping I could do at the end of this whole journey. Arthur, you and everybody else who's contributed and everything has helped me do that. So I'm very grateful again to you for doing that. Not only is it great for me, but it's great for everybody that's connected with the book and everybody that's in the book. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I think we all appreciate you and the other members of MASH from all the different teams and what they produce to bring to the world. Because I think without MASH and the magic it was, none of this conversation would be happening. Probably. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. What I love about the, the book, too, is the photos in the back, you pay tribute to a lot of people. You have so many pictures in the back of the people behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who were behind the camera and producers, directors, uh, assistants. I mean, everybody is represented in the back of the book. So when we say that this is a book celebrating MASH, it truly is. It's celebrating everybody that was involved with the show. Well, thank you. I I wanted to do that because, I, you know, my nine years with the show, uh, you know, I fell in love with everybody <laughs> and all the actors and all the crew and everybody, the writers, directors, producers, crew members, everybody. And it's true. You're out at the ranch. And this is when I really, really got a, a sense about how it does take a village to make these things. We're out at the ranch and it's freezing cold in the morning and then it's terribly hot in the afternoon. But these crew guys and crew women are out there doing their best, dragging huge, uh, you know, lights around and over dirt and stuff. And they're just knocking their brains out and they're knocking their brains out for two reasons. One, they're getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> but two, they're getting paid to make something that ended up being, you know, an iconic television show. Yeah. And I think on some level, you know, maybe around the fourth or fifth year, everybody kind of got it. It was going to be a real special event, this show. But boy, people gave of themselves genuinely and sincerely. And I wanted to pay tribute to that, to the people that I knew. And I, and there were so many more. I wish I had, you know, could go back and take pictures of everybody again. And there's so many people that are there that I didn't remember the names of. So I felt bad that I couldn't include their names. I did the best I could. But yeah, it's fun to see the, all those faces of people who actually helped MASH happen because without them, it wouldn't have happened. So, Arthur, how did you start being an, a, a designer? Where'd you come from? Oh, it's quite the story. Um, I actually was a little kid watching Mr. Rogers, and he had an episode on photo editing where they had like a photo editor and they were showing some guy how they, you know, edit photos. And I went to my mom. I was like nine years old. 
And I said, Mom, I really want to try doing this. And she got me an educational edition of Photoshop 3. And for those listening who know Photoshop, they'll know that Photoshop 3 came out around 1997. (laughs) (laughs) So I fell in love with everything visual. And I spent every day of my life working on anything visual I could get my hands on. So it just, I've been addicted to it since I was a child. Wow. And it's all because of Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> Rogers set, hooked me up with a career. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Oh. Uh, wow. I'm just going to read something you have on your website. I'm the guy that loves what he does. We all have a passion and mine is for design. Whether it's a new product or fun photo for my kids, I'm all in. You know, you talk about passion. Actors have the passion for being actors and comedians and writers and all that kind of stuff. And so you have that same passion. That's the thing that drives everything, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Anything I can do to create. I love creating. I've now gotten into even more elaborate creating, like woodworking and metalwork. But if I can make something, that's what makes me happy. That's my passion. Well, you made a lot of people happy that wanted a nice looking book called Secrets of the Mash Mess. Yes, you did. (laughs) Do you know how many hours you spent working on this, Arthur? I don't know the exact hours. My wife calculated it somewhere in the hundreds. Well, it was good talking with you, Arthur. Stay around. (laughs) And Jeff paid you how much per hour? I'm just. uh, (laughs) I'm sorry. uh... Jeff was called away. He has to go to the (laughs) vomitorium right now. No, there's a difference. I. I do a lot of photo editing for a lot of photographers. A lot of them reach out to me and they'll do the photo shoot and they'll have me do the editing. And I've gotten that down to a science. And so I'm quick, I'm efficient, and I don't cost the photographers a lot of money because, you know, people work on budgets. But where a large chunk of this was passion and my love of MASH, I put extra effort into it. There would be times where I would take a screenshot of the photo And I'd stare at it for a good while, realizing that I was like one frame off of what Jeff picked. Mm. And so I'd go back and I'd try and grab that frame (laughs) just to make sure it was right. So so while there was a lot of hours, a lot of those were by choice and not by necessity. It was just my desire to be as perfect as I could in, in helping the fans get what Jeff wanted. During the process, was there anything that surprised you, either in a good way or in a challenging way? Oh, there's a few surprises that popped up. Actually, the one that I think was the the hardest surprise for me was some of Jeff's photos from Garrett and Maxwell. <laughs> Those have long since been lost to history. Hmm. And so I was I was grateful that Jeff and I were able to work together to bring what we could to the book and bring it back to life so that they are saved. Hmm. So that was a big one for me. The other one was I was I was surprised at some of the jokes I missed in MASH, I've seen MASH many, many, many times. I'm a big watcher in the evening um, before bed kind of watching. And when you have to freeze on a frame and play it over and play it over and play it over, you start seeing a bunch of things in the background or in, in other places that you don't notice before that just kind of give you a good chuckle. And that's what's cool about this edition of the book is not only was it originally written as a love letter to MASH and love letter to MASH fans, but now it's also been revived by someone who also loves the show. So you know that a lot of extra care went into this. We know that you're a big fan. We met you out at the ranch for the 50th anniversary celebration. Yeah, and man, Jeff, you gave, and I have to apologize because I know she's listening. There was a wonderful fan And I am terrible at names, so I forgot her name. She walked with my wife and I into the MASH set. And when I said hi to you, Jeff, you kneeled down on one knee, just playing a a bit, thanking me. And her face of shock (laughs) when she realized she had walked with me all the way in and that was your reaction was priceless. And her and I chatted afterwards. She She's an adorable fan. And I, I do apologize. I'm forgetting names so poorly. <laughs> you know who you are. Yes, you know who you are. And you were a wonderful sport for watching that go down. But that was pretty hilarious. That was fun. I remember that. Well, it was heartfelt. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't an act. He's down on his knees doing the same thing right now. It's a yeah, I'm, 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 it's very painful to do this from, from the floor. <laughs> so let me ask you, what was Jeff Maxwell like to work with? Was he, uh, how did he? Be honest, be brutally honest. Yeah, yeah. don't breathe. Come on, get right down to it. So I don't get super starstruck 
by celebrities just because I've worked with a few of them before and I've been around a couple very well-off people in the way I've worked. But the first phone call when you called me was the hardest to keep a straight face. (laughs) I was trying so hard to be like, yeah, I'm a professional, Jeff. (laughs) The whole time in my head, I'm just screaming. (laughs) So I was was absolutely just ecstatic and I had to keep it all in. And my wife and my sister-in-law are both huge MASH fans. And every time I talked to you, they would lose it and they'd come up to me, what do you say? What do you say? (laughs) And I'd be like, well, we talked about page 262 and how we needed to work on. (laughs) They'd be like, oh. (laughs) But you were were great to work with and it, it was fun working with you and sharing some of my knowledge with you. I know there's a couple programs that you used that you didn't even know existed before. And so you were awesome to work with and great to bounce ideas and everything back off so we could get the best book out. Well, thank you. What is it generally you do in terms of your, because I know you have a lot of design categories listed and photography. So what is it generally, who comes to you and says, hey, help me here? Uh, So I do have a full-time job as a director of product development, but my, a large portion of my financial stability does come from freelance work. A lot of it's professional photographers wanting editing. I do a lot of, so in my past, I designed trade shows, not the booth, but the whole show. Mm. So when you go into a convention center for like a, Mm -hmm. like one of those fan cons that you go to, there's the individual booths, but somebody had to design the whole event. And that's what I've did a lot of. And so it's kind of just a smattering smattering of intelligence. I thank you. <laughs> no, it's just a smattering of different things. So one week I'll be editing photos for a restaurant and the next week I'll be designing a new product. And the week after that, I'll be helping somebody design the floor plan for their new retail store. So it, it really is just my love and obsession with design that's led me to just creating anything that I can get my hands on creating. Wow. That's great. I was Igor. (laughs) (laughs) It's still much better than what I do. (laughs) I I, I always tell my wife, people pay me to make things look pretty. (laughs) And you made Igor look pretty. And thank you for that. Sweet. Thank you. I, I have to say there are two scenes that are my most favorite Igor scenes in all of MASH and they weren't in the original book and they are in the new book. Yay! <laughs> and you pointed them out to me. Yeah. I did. What are those scenes? So so the two are is when Frank tells Igor to paint the rocks white and Margaret says, you, ca- you can't paint them white. And Frank tells him to flip them over every night. <laughs> and it yes. just pans to Igor's face of just like <laughs> this dumbfounded. Yes. I saw that picture in there. Yes. <laughs> and then the other one is... I will fight to the death anybody who disagrees with me. This is the best one-liner throwaway joke in all of MASH. When everybody discovers Charles has the newspaper and Igor comes running and goes, I need the classifieds. I need a job. (laughs) (laughs) I listen for that line every time I listen to that episode because that line is my favorite. (laughs) That's correct. That's the infamous scene, too, wow. where there's a uh, random crew member in, in like a blue sweatshirt hanging out. The blue guy. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't even know that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Once you wow. see him, you can never unsee him. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back and look to see who that was. <laughs> well, hey, Arthur, fantastic work. On behalf of all the MASH fans out there, thank you for all the tireless work you put into uh, resurrecting this. Jeff, thank you for writing it originally and then also updating it and adding some more fun things if somebody is a mash fan or if you know somebody who is a mash fan this is a great gift you know christmas is coming up soon we're on the cusp of the holidays so buy this for your whole family or you know buy a copy for yourself and make your entire like thanksgiving meal with recipes from the book. <laughs> there you go. I, I like that. Yeah. And if your family survives, yeah. yes. then you let us know. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't, you can call our law firm. <laughs> right. We'll have a hotline set up. Yeah. 555 Yeah. Well, that's fun. I did write this as a uh, love letter to the show and it, it turned into sort of a a real journey for me, not only doing which I love doing it, it it introduced me to Ryan Patrick, which is great. 
And then I learned a lot about the legal system, trying to wrestle the rights away from the publisher. <laughs> so that was an education as well. So I, it, it's gone on from since 1997 to 2023. And it, it has been an interesting journey and it has brought some wonderful people to me in my life. And so I really appreciate that. And again, Arthur, I can't thank you enough. You did a fantastic job. And I am no longer, I'm now proud of it before I was not, except for when it first came out, but I'm now back to being proud of it and people can enjoy it. And I hope people will buy it and uh, enjoy the pictures and the recipes and have a great time with it. I was, I was going to say, I, thank you for, for saying that, but I, I have to sneak in here real quick and also thank my wife, Heather. She uh, was very patient with me in the time it took me to put into this book. So I, I can't let the podcast go by without at least acknowledging her her help in getting through this. Hey, Heather. Heather, Woo! thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting Arthur do this. Arthur and I are going to go to a, a mountain resort, by the way, just the two of us. So <laughs> we'll be gone for about six months. So Heather, if you're okay with that. <laughs> Is Heather in the design business or she's not in the design business? No, my wife is just the most incredible woman. She will do anything and everything to serve people. She just loves helping. She participates in a lot of community activities and as oh. well as family. And she is very dedicated to service for others. So she sounds like a real shady character. She <laughs> is. Yeah. She is the best woman in the world in my eyes. Uh, oh, that's wonderful. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you out at the ranch. And by the way, uh, anybody who buys Secrets of the Mash Mess will get to see Arthur and his wife in that book. And my sister-in-law, Allison. She came with us because she's a big fan. Hi, Allison. Thanks for coming. I <laughs> thank you all for showing up and for letting Arthur do this. It's just a wonderful thing. Thank you, everybody. Are there any other Mash fans in your family we can say hello to? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, oddly enough, my parents are not a fan of MASH. Oh, well. My oh. story of getting into MASH is different than everyone else's. Okay, how'd you get into MASH? Yeah, then? we need to hear the story now. So years and years ago when I was really little, um, my dad, we had one TV in the house that we were allowed to watch as kids. And I always was like, can I get one for my room? Can I get one for my room? And he kept saying no. And being a good parent, he said no. <laughs> But he stuck his foot in his mouth when he said, I'll make you a deal. You can get a TV for your room when you can pay for it. Mm. So I went to a thrift shop and found a TV for $20. <laughs> it was black and white. Yes. And I bought it. Ah. And every night I would go to bed, I'd turn on the TV, and there was only one good show on TV to watch. Ah. And that was MASH, because everything else was boring adult stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I watched MASH every night for years on this black and white TV. It took me a long time to realize it was in color. <laughs> <laughs> and I fell in love with the show that was my time, time for me to just sit alone quietly and just relax. And so MASH became my show that was my go-to relax show. And so I was the only MASH fan in my family, but it became a part of me. Wow. So you were raised on MASH and Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> Best combo. <laughs> Pretty good combo. Yeah. Yeah. Works yeah, for me. Can't beat that. <laughs> well, hey, Arthur, thank you again. And uh, thank you for being a part of MASH Matters. It's been fun to have you on. And it's been a joy to talk about your journey along with my journey uh, with Secrets of the MASH Mess, the Lost Recipes of Private Igor. Which you can find on Amazon. You can also just go to mashmatterspodcast.com slash book and uh, get the link to buy the book. But when you go there, make sure that whatever you find on Amazon, you are clicking on the 50th anniversary edition to make sure you're getting the new updated version. Yep. Anything else will be uh, the crummy one. <laughs> so it's got to be the 50th anniversary edition. All right. Hey, Arthur. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been a real joy to talk with you. It's been great to get to know all of you. So thank you. And until next time, here's looking up your old address. Thank you.